Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome to a quick and dirty guide to getting into Star Citizen. If this video just came out, then there is a free to fry, free to fly, those words, free to fly week going on right now, so you'll have access to a bunch of free ships. I highly recommend you jump in and try it out and see what you like. Now, as of recording this, it hasn't actually gone live yet, but if you are jumping in for the first time, here is the first thing you're gonna see. I'm gonna run you through some of the really basics of the controls, how to get in, what the game is kind of about, how big the universe is, and then you'll be free to go explore the galaxy at your will. So, let's go ahead and dive into it. The first thing you'll see is this screen. Universe Star Marine Arena Commander. 99% of the players playing right now are probably under the universe right now. This is the MMOE alpha version of the full Star Citizen universe. That's what we're going to jump into in a moment. The other two are the little pieces of the game. Now, if you're part of a Star Citizen community like Armco, yes, this is going to be a slight plug. Armco is our sci-fi community here on the channel. Been around for a few years now since the original announcement to Star Citizen going way back then you'll probably find a lot more use for these two options here. Except for maybe Arena Commander. There's actually a lot of fun in there by yourself. But Star Marine, this is your first person. This is going to be your um, team deathmatch. This is going to be your elimination. You're going to be able to play with some of the weapons here. But there aren't a lot of people actually playing this right now. I jumped on a few times today and yesterday, and I found that, well, the same people were playing, and I ended up in the same servers with them. Arena Commander, though, has a bit more use if you want to dive into this. If you want to try out, and we'll let it load here, if you want to try out, say, a particular ship that you own or that you have access to because of the Free Fly Weekend, uh, then, which, by the way, is running between the 28th and the 3rd, I believe, yeah, 28th and the 3rd, then I recommend going into free flight and messing around with the ship there because it won't be affected by the server. You'll get a completely smooth, based on your rig, your PC, experience there. This is also where you can get in some dogfighting action with the Vandal Swarm or the Pirate Swarm. Pirate Swarm is basically all the ships that they have access to right now in the game thrown in here as enemies, and you can fight wave after wave, and you can do so cooperatively. Vandal Swarm, the Vandal, the big NPC bad guy, uh, boogeyman of the Star Citizen universe, so you can go in there and fight them, and they're really cool ships. Uh, the rest of them are multiplayer. Classic Race is actually fun if you think you're a real badass in controlling your ship, or if you want to fine-tune those controls, say you just got a new HOTAS, or you're trying out the Xbox controller. Classic Race is actually a good way of jumping in and seeing how uh, accurate you can be with those controls. But let's get into what everybody really cares about, and that is the universe. Now, when you click that, you're probably not going to see this screen. You're going to see this screen. This is the character creator. It's like almost any other one, run through, make your character, other than it does have this kind of ancestor system for making your character. So basically you've got a bunch of sources here that you can go through. You can move the bar around and it'll affect how your character looks. You can also lock certain sections. So if you don't want to change the mouth, but you want the jaw, you want different ears, or you, you want to affect those more, you can go through and change these. Also, uh, of course, hair options, change hair color at the top and then cycle through sources on the left. So that's how you make your character. Once you're all sexified and ready to jump in to the game, click on Universe, click on Stanton System. I would just ignore the hangers for now. This is kind of a leftover from the uh, the old alpha when this originally came out. You get your own hanger to explore and look around in. You can put some decorations up if you have access to them if you're a subscriber, but really they're just boxes that hold ships and you can't do much there with them. That's why we've got the Stanton system, the actual universe. Clicking that and visit location and we'll load into Stanton. This is the solar system that we have access to and the only one we have access to. As of recording this, rumor is we're going to have a new solar system to explore soon. The total game will have a hundred systems. So they've got a ways to go, but they have been exponentially speeding up how much content they're putting out because the tools have been completed. It's actually quite impressive watching this develop. It's been interesting. They have some very unique takes on what's important for a game to focus on, and it might be your thing and it might not, particularly in how they focus on immersion for Star Citizen, what RSI is doing. Anyways, once you load into the universe, you're going to find yourself lying in your bunk aboard Port Alasar. Let's go ahead and hit W so we can get up. Like I said, this is going to be a quick and dirty guide, so we're going to be running through this pretty quickly. Sadly, there's nothing in my bunk to interact with. Normally there's like a coffee cup or some plates or something that I could play around with and show you guys those controls, but they're not here. Sad times. But this is our bunk. There's a bunch of these. Everybody gets a different one as they load in. Uh, depending on if you load in here, if you've done a little exploring in the universe, you may find that you don't load in here. You load in at one of the other planets. This is a multiplayer server, so you are going to see some chat popping up on the screen. 
First thing we're gonna wanna do is interact with the door. W, A, S, and D, that is not the order that I just pushed those. W, S, A, and D, there we go. Uh, you can side strafe, uh, is to move around. Walking up to something you wanna interact with will light it up. If it's this color and you hit F, uh, it means it is act you can activate it. Uh, it is something that is activatable, but you're not close enough. Getting closer, if it is dark orange, means that you can just tap F, and it will do whatever the thing is that it needs to do, and that was open. Now, if you hold F, you actually get the internal thoughts, and this will show you whatever options are near you that you can interact with. All we really have is the close option, or in this case, let it fade away, the open option for the door. Holding F is something you're gonna do in your ship. You're gonna do this if you're like looting up a weapon off the ground, you hold down F and it'll give you your internal thoughts of what you can, uh, how you can interact with it. If you're holding something in your hand, we can look down and actually see our body. Um, you would be able to interact with that, like a weapon. If I had my rifle out, which I can't because we're in a no, uh, a no arm zone. Um, so we can't pull out any weapons right now. Once we leave here, we will be able to. So let's get into a little bit more of the walking around. We are in the HAB section of Port Olisar. It's actually quite a large space station. If we hit F4, we can go into third person and kind of look around our character. If we hit Z and hold it, we can roll the mouse around. Be aware, there is a little bit of a bug that I've run into a couple of times today where Z didn't work for me. Uh, I couldn't rotate around my character. Now, holding Z in this thir third person mode um, also works on starships or any vehicles. So you hit F4 to go in and out of first person, third person, and holding Z to zoom around. So if you really want to get a look at that ship that you're flying, uh, or you want to see what your buddy's doing in the back of the cargo bay back there because he's opened your door while you're in like quantum jump, um, hold down Z and you can rotate the camera to get that angle. Walking around, this is the more unique element of uh, Star Citizen is how they control speed while walking. It's middle mouse wheel. Roll it forward to get more speed, to get a good jog going, get your cardio in. Roll it back to RP walk. And I'm a player who loves to know where RP Walk is. Now there's a lot of advanced controls I'm not gonna talk about, like the fact that you can have face over IP using a camera to watch your face as you say things or have facial, whatever your facial expressions change will actually be put onto your character. It's hilarious, I recommend you try it. I'm not using it right now. All right, so we've got our walking around. You can also crouch, they have sped up the crouch animation. Thank God, it is much faster now. You can move around, crouch, so if you wanna get a little bit more accuracy with that rifle that you're holding, you can also hit Z and low crawl, because you can. In caves, this has actually been useful. Um, and of course, if you're setting up an ambush with a sniper rifle, then hell, why not? Let's roll out, though. Uh, other things we can do, hitting F, getting back into our menu. If you're noticing um, that, and I saw somebody freaking out in the chat in game today, they were like, I can't see any of my chat, ah. Uh, he wasn't wearing his helmet. Your UI is actually attached to your helmet. If you hit F2, this will bring up your Moby Glass. This is how you manage just about everything in the game, from your vehicle loadouts and what missiles your Avenger bounty hunter, you know, vehicle uh, stalker here is equipped with, to your modifications for your rifle, your personal gear and equipment on your body, how many grenades are sitting on your chest right now. Everything is managed in here, the jobs you're taking, how you set a course in your ship, this is where you're gonna manage it. You can even see your current statistics, my name, Captain Shaq, my crime stats, whether I'm wanted, my heart rate, which I assume is a good thing, uh, and where your O2 tanks and stuff are. So just keep in mind, hit F2, or um, I think F1 actually brings you in here as well. Uh, and this will bring you, yeah, F1 to bring you right in. So let's get back into this real quick. Speaking of gear and equipment, we'll go under equipment, and here is our clothing. Clothing is literally, you know, your jacket, your pants, whatever you're wearing. If you're in an area with an oxygen environment, um, you may want to rock some, some normal clothes. You can go and shop and buy stuff. Different shops throughout the universe have different gear and equipment that you can find. Um, I think they've done a reset since last time I went clothes shopping, so I don't think I have any of my cool stuff. Under suit, this is going to be your actual pressurized suit. This is what you need and a helmet to go out in a vacuum and not turn blue and explode or die. Uh, I don't think you'll actually explode. That's not how space works. You lied to me. Freaking get your ass to Mars. Uh, let's go to weapon system. Now, they have added in attachments for weapons. Not all weapons have attachments yet. Um, no, actually, I think they all do, except for maybe the sniper rifle. Anyways, you can equip stuff like laser sights and flashlights on here uh, to your weapons. Right now, I'm rocking the pretty awful energy shotgun. I don't know why I have this. I think I just started with it. We can switch to my sniper rifle if I want to. But this is where you're gonna go in put your attachments. Now, I do recommend, once you have a weapon that you want, put some freaking magazines on your chest. 
Uh, we're using the energy shotgun, so let's go ahead and put those in. You may see some uh, red indicators saying, "Hey, um, this doesn't have a this doesn't have a thing on it. This doesn't have a model or whatever." We can go ahead and pop these out. Oh no, no, my problem is I only have one energy shotgun magazine that I'm currently wearing. You will actually see your grenades and stuff on you, which is pretty cool. Seems like we need to go shopping. Anyways, let's roll out and get our ship so we can get out into the universe. Since this is an online server, uh, you will see players running around in here. You'll see a lot of chat. If chat starts to drive you crazy, hit F12. That will turn your chat off. Uh, shift is to sprint, which I'm sprinting down right now. When you find this room, that. All right, let's look at this and hit F. When you find this room with the hologram above it, you are in the Polar Alisar uh, ship claiming thing, the ship retrieval consoles. Walk up to it and hit F and you'll be able to pull out your ship. Uh, my Gladius is here, everything else is just blank. That means that I can pull it anytime I want. You may have a huge list, by the way, if you're playing this week, because it's free fly week. Uh, everything should be flyable. It is not, as of right now, uh, which is a little bit surprising. That is, I think it should have been out by this morning, but oh well. Let's go ahead and retrieve my Aegis Gladius. This is a light fighter. Uh, I really like the internal layout for this fighter. It's very maneuverable. It looks really cool. So we'll take this as our as our demo vehicle. Uh, remember, take a ship if you're trying stuff out. If you want to do cargo runs, take something with a cargo bay. Take a Freelancer. That's a great ship to learn in. But we're at Delta-02. If you have a better memory than me, I'm mine like a goldfish, I'll probably forget. But Delta-02 is that direction, looking at the sign. Holding F and middle mouse wheel actually lets you zoom in and out. So if you see something that doesn't look quite right on that station full of criminals, well, zoom in on it before you walk over there and see what's going on. Just hold down F. That hold down F comes up a lot. Let's go ahead and open this door. Uh, we can do a little bit of shopping at Port Alasar if we want to and find a better weapon than what we've got. If you just head over to the weapons. There are weapons, there's armor, there's the clothing store here. Um, and then there is Dumper's Depot, I believe is on the other side. Dumper's Depot is for ship components. There's lots of customization with the ships. Um, but anyways, here's the weapons. Uh, we're gonna go with my favorite go-to weapon, which is actually the Stormfall. This is the P8 SMG. Any other variants that you see uh, for the Stormfall, that Stormfall is just the paint job, actually. So, but the P8 is what we want. Let's go ahead and buy that. We can't inspect it and see its stats, but I already know I want it. Uh, it'll tell you how much it is and how much money you've got. There we go, we bought it. And then we can pick up some ammo. Now you can buy ammo and buy anything that's on display just by holding down F and and cycling over it and clicking buy if you want to, and it'll come up and tell you how much it is. Or you can do what's a little bit easier to do, um, which is actually, I just grabbed a Mark I, or a Mark IV frag grenade. Walk over to the screen in the back here, access it, find what you're looking for, and you can buy in bulk here. It's a little bit easier. Uh, when it works. When something on the screen comes up. There we go. Took it a minute. There are definitely some bugs. The early version of me trying to record this, I got a crash, uh, barely getting out of my bunk, which was a new one. Uh, they have flares. If you're gonna do some cave exploration is a thing now. Um, you can leave a little trail of flares to follow back if you want to, uh, to light up an area and find your way back. What we actually want though, um, is gonna go into utility. I think I've already got a med pin. Why don't I buy another one just in case. Med pins, you hit C if you take any damage in a firefight. Uh, or if you drop from a high place, and this will just instantly heal you, and it'll stop. Um, well, thank you. Uh, it'll stop any bleeding as well. So let's go back under weapons real quick, and these are all the attachments. So laser pointers. Let me grab the. Do 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 do. Where is the field light? There it is. I'll buy one of these. We can go ahead and attach it. Um, play around with that a little bit, and then we'll also grab ourselves. The, there it is, nope, 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 the P8SC SMG. Um, is that what we're using? We're using the P8? I think we're using the P8. So we'll go ahead and buy that. It'll ask us how many. Uh, we'll just grab like eight. It's fine. It's cheap, no big deal. Speaking of money, if you are starting out and you've never played before, uh, make sure you use somebody's referral code because you'll get five grand right off the bat. Uh, whether you use mine, I'll throw mine in the description if I remember to do it. If I don't, a lot of YouTubers, are, there's some on Reddit, just use somebody's and you'll get some extra points, and they'll get some extra UEC as well. Um, some extra cash. So let's go ahead and walk out of here before we get out of here. Uh, we don't have to be in any kind of hurry. Our Gladius is in a, a parking spot up there. It's in one of the, um, the landing zones. 
uh, and it's not going anywhere. They are locked now, thankfully. If you played any of the older versions, you remember the horror of not having locked vehicles. Okay, weapons. Let's go with not that awfulness. Um, I really don't like the shotgun. Some of you may love that thing. I do not. Um, and then we're going to want to grab our underbarrel attachment, which is our field light. Go ahead and equip that. Make sure you hit save changes or it's not going to do anything. Let's also go ahead and grab some spare mags on our body. And we should be able to see those attached to us. Spare mags. And I've got a bunch of them now, so they shouldn't come up red anymore. So you can see I'm kind of stacking them up there. That's fine. We'll go ahead and save and equip. And... Is this change pending? That should be done. Yeah, you're done. You put my SMG on the back. Let's make sure it actually worked and it went through. So we'll hit F4. I do have my SMG on my back. Excellent. So let's get to the ship. Following the signs around, we were at Delta 2. There's Delta 0 through 4. We're going to have to cycle through the airlock. This is when you want to make sure you're wearing your helmet or you're going to end up dead and made fun of by everyone on the server if they see your body sitting there. Let's go ahead and cycle that. Bum, bum, bum. And we're out. Now, even if you... Oh, yeah. Follow the signs. Let's follow the signs. Delta zero two. 2. This direction and then up the stairs. We'll sprint out here. See the loveliness that is the Gladius. And there are all kinds of ships for all kinds of missions. If you want to do uh, racing and want something super fast, the M50 is wonderful. If you want luxury liner, um, there is a literal super yacht that we took out. Um, I'll be putting out a video on that soon. Hilarious. But there's the, the Gladius. I think this is a really cool ship with a Gatling cannon on the front, by the way. Now, most of the fighters, single seat or two seater, if you're looking at the Super Hornet, um, will have, aft looking forward, a way of getting into the ship on the port side. That would be on the left side, or the side that we are currently on right now. Now, the bigger ships have other ways of getting in. If you're taking out the Freelancer, as I used as my example for what you should take out if you're going to go for your first cargo run, if you're going to do like a cargo mission, you can see other players taking off right now. Um, you're going to use whatever are the larger doors are. Uh, the big door in the back of the Freelancer is the way you get in. Some of the really big super mega yachts, um, things like that may have like a projector that will project a circle onto the ground where you need to stand to access them, where it will actually send an elevator down to you to pick you up because it's so freaking large. I know, it's, it's a bit crazy. Walking up, again, holding F. We can use whatever interactions we want. Entering pilot seat will basically do all of these things and get us into the seat quicker. Uh, we can just, you know, open the ladder up if we want to and leave it open if we're opening it for someone else. We've got a dignitary getting in or teaching somebody how to fly. Let's go ahead and just get into the pilot seat, though. That'll open the canopy. You'll notice that the audio has changed because we're in a, uh, in a vacuum now. There's lots of little bits of detail like that I quite love. And the cockpit should close up in just a second as the ladder folds in. There is a little bit of a weird bug where if you're in something like the Super Hornet and it's got a double seat to it, uh, you can't get in or out while someone else is in the animation for getting in and out. Hopefully that changes soon. So if you're like, oh, I keep hitting the button to get out, quick key, by the way, is Y to get out of a vehicle. Uh, and nothing's happening. If your buddy's getting out, that's what's happening. Uh, we ran into that issue. So, holding F, we can look around the cockpit and we can see all the options. We can exit the ship, we can eject from the ship, and then we have all of the buttons that allow us to access. Now, every ship is different. Uh, don't get frustrated if you can't find where your buttons are. Uh, they just, just go through every one of the switches. The Freelancer's a little weird. It's a little harder to find in the pilot seat where all the buttons are for powering on and getting your engines on. What we want to do to get flight ready, it isn't full flight simulator. You're not going to have to do, you know, engine run-ups one at a time or priming fuel pumps or anything like that. It is literally at the moment just bring the reactor online and turn the engine on. Combat assist. And she'll warm up on her own. That's Assistant about as far as it gets for startup. Now, you can even shorten those two clicks to one where you saw it said flight ready right here. Just click that and it'll turn everything on. As the ship warms up, you're going to see all of our multifunction displays kick online, top left-hand corner here, and these are all different based on what ship you're in. The Freelancer, by the way, doesn't have that indicator on the top left. It would just be projected into your helmet, which is kind of cool. Um, but for us, for this ship, we actually have uh, displays. That top left one, that's going to be our ship indicator. Any damage we take, if we're missing a wing, it will literally disappear from that picture. It also shows us our shields. Quick shield controls. I'm only going to go through the stuff that's actually like kind of important to know. Quick shield controls. Say you want to go all Star Wars on it and double front on your shields. Tap 8. And you'll pull energy 
eight on your number pad. You'll pull energy from your other shields and stick it into the one that you want. You can do that again. I'll put them onto my starboard side here. Tap it a few times till it goes. And you see it's actually moving around. Takes a moment for this to do this. Why would you want to use this? Well, if you're in a heavier ship, you're taking a lot of fire from some jerk and you're trying to hyperspace out, you're probably going to want to double up on your back shields as you run like the wind. Let's go ahead and even out our, our shields with uh, number pad five. You'll see the energy is starting to move around. We can hold down F and look at all these displays and actually start messing with them. So if we zoom in, middle mouse wheel to zoom in, we can actually adjust our power distribution. We want more speed, we want more power to our energy weapons, so they recharge faster. We want more power to our shields. That's the thing you can do. I leave that up to you guys to mess around with these systems. The new scanning system is in, so there's a lot of um, a lot of fun things you can mess around with here. And these, these ship systems are their early versions, and they're being reworked and reworked. We just got a flight rework, uh, all the ship's control. We just got the ability to turn, um, if you've got VTOL engines like uh, Firefly, uh, Serenity from Firefly, where you want your engines to aim downwards or, or backwards, now you can hit J to do that. We can't do that in this craft, obviously. It doesn't have those options. So there's a lot of little bits for different ships, and things are probably going to be changed. So check the date on this video. All right, there's our target indicator. We don't have a target right now. If we hit five, we can cycle through any of the friendly targets in the area. Interesting that they're coming up red, though, for friendlies. Kind of weird. There's actually somebody over there coming off our uh, port side. I'm holding Z now. If you want to just quickly scan the horizon, look around and see what's off your, uh, your port or starboard wing, hold down Z. If you do F, you're going to kind of get locked on to some of the options, and you may accidentally click silly things like open canopy while you're in a dogfight. You don't want that. All right, let's get into flight control. So welcome to flight school with Captain Shack. Don't worry, anything that falls off the ship was extra parts. If we, I told you this is gonna be, whoops. That's not what I want. I told you this is gonna be quick and dirty. Let's go ahead and rotate the camera. Like I said, F4 to go into third person, hold Z to scroll around and look at your vehicle. You don't need to do this to take off. I'm just doing this so I can show you what we're doing. Hitting with the engines on, space bar is gonna be vertical. We're off the deck. We're also gonna hit F4. Oh, hello, Freelancer. It looks like I'm in somebody's way as they're coming in. Let me go ahead and get a little bit more altitude here. Away from the landing pads, at least. As he's coming in for a landing. Loving the look on that paint job, by the way. Oh, I dig that. So, other controls. Spacebar was to go straight up. Whoops. Q and E is to rotate. You can see me doing it here. Let me get a little bit farther away from the base, so we're going to go ahead and kick on our engines a bit. Hitting... In will bring up our landing gear. You can see those collapse inside. Like I said before, J is to rotate engines if your ship has that option. Ours does not. But it'll give you a little bit more thrust, particularly if you're in a cutlass. Those big engines will wrap to the back, and then you can, well, I want to go fast. That's the way you do it. Talking about going fast, let's talk about engine control, power control. So, we're all the way over here. You just hit spacebar. You've taken off. Control, by the way, is to go down. Spacebar up. But you want to go forward. Now, I love how they've changed this. Middle mouse wheel will allow you to change the ceiling for speed. All right, so how fast uh, you will go, you will accelerate too. It's F12 to turn off our chat so it's not distracting us here. So what we can do is we can hit W to go forward, but we're not moving because the ceiling for our, for our acceleration is at nothing. So we're going to use middle mouse wheel to bring it up to about half there. You're going to notice there's a red line. That's kind of your combat indicator. If you go anywhere beyond that, um, you're gonna find that you're not turning as fast as you could in a dogfight. Now, that may be a good thing or a bad thing, because more speed, maybe you can zoom and boom. I'm not gonna go into dogfighting tactics uh, in this video. But, that's how you control it. W, and then you can do middle mouse wheel to change the, the maximum uh, speed that you've got. You can also, and I really love this, hit C. Basically, cruise control. It will keep you at the speed that uh, you've set. And we can roll that up and we'll accelerate and we can roll that back. This is great if you're doing some canyon flying and you don't want to constantly be manipulating the power too much um, or you want to do smooth manipulations. Because honestly, if you're using a keyboard and mouse and not a HOTAS setup, you don't have that fine throttle control. This gives you a simulation of that with a keyboard and mouse. That's why I love it so much. Even though I do have a HOTAS, we're not using it right now. Uh, what else we got? Well, we have our... D stab. Um, ah, we probably we won't go with that in this. We're not gonna go. We're not gonna go crazy with any of that. So, let's actually go back into cruise mode. Let's fly through here. If you've made it to a, um, if you've made it to a star base, and you want to land someplace, hit F two. 
hit up one of your F keys, go into your comm link and contacts, and you can request permission to land. Port all in star landing service. We can go ahead and call them up and say, uh, hey, requesting permission to land at one of your bays. Please proceed to assigned landing bay. You'll get a comm back. You're actually supposed to see somebody there, but for whatever reason, it's not coming up, or maybe they took it out because it wasn't working properly. Uh, but we've got an assigned landing bay. We've got a UI element letting us know where to go. And we can, and I recommend you do this. There is a lot of people on right now. Holy crap. This is really, really, really populated. But there you go. There's our landing bay. We can actually bring it in here. I recommend you do this before you do anything else. Just practice landing, flying around, getting used to it a bit. Uh, all right, so we're gonna come in here. Uh, I'm gonna take off cruise control as soon as we start coming in a little bit slower. We're gonna hit in to bring the gear down. And, and manually land so you get used to it. There is an autopilot. You can find those controls in your options. I don't recommend them starting out because it kind of makes you lazy. Um, and don't forget to bring it down nice and easy and keep that nose up. There you go. You're down. Uh, I think if I'm not from... Let me double check it real quick. Um, they may have changed this. Yeah, I can refuel here if I want to and I can do some minor repairs. Don't know why I have repairs, but we could refuel if we needed to. Let's go ahead and do those. Get a little bit of fuel. You've got your quantum fuel. You've got your hydrogen engines or whatever they call them in this. Um, you will be burning those. And it will give you call-outs as you go 25% marks for each of your fuels. Thank so you. let's again. take a look. Let me turn that off real quick. Let's take a look. There is, by the way, Crusader. That's the gas giant that the station orbits around. Let's go ahead and accelerate a bit, get away from the station, hit F2, and see what the universe looks like. F2 is your, what do they call this? They call it the skyline map, right? So this is your map, this is your holographic display. Port all stars, where we're at. You can hit this little targeter to find you. We can zoom out with middle mouse wheel. Zoom out, zoom out, Polar Dossar, around Crusader, which is right in front of us. There's the gas giant. You can see some of the comm arrays around here. You can see some of the moons, Yella, Daymar, you can visit if you want to. Now, this is everything right around here. You can do missions around here uh, from the mission menu in here. Um, but check this out. Zooming out even farther, you can see how much it has expanded. Stanton is the solar system we're in. And there is quite a bit to go see and do here, from going all the way to Art Corp, the city planet, going to Hurston, going to Delmar. There's all kinds of things to explore there and little, um, uh, it's, it, there's a considerable amount of stuff here, but I'm going to warn you and I will show you why. If you're gonna go to something like Hurston, and we're all the way over at Crusader and we set a route, you just click it, click set route where you wanna go. It'll tell you how much fuel it's gonna take, how much you've got. Bear in mind, not every ship is created equal in quantum jump, in, in their cruising speed and faster than light. This ship will take us like 15 minutes to get to Hurston. It's huge, and we'll burn over half of our fuel getting there. So we're not gonna go all the way out there. We're gonna zoom back into Crusader. We're gonna do something a little bit more reasonable. Um, why don't we fly out to Daymar? Why not? Set route, they give you a little bit of lore in the corner here if you wanna read about, you know, whatever's going on there. We're just gonna do a bit of a flight, learn some controls. So we've got our course set, it's come up here. Let's go ahead and close this by tapping F2 again. We're gonna have a UI indicator on the direction that we need to go. Let's go ahead and spin around. You don't want to overheat your engines if you push them too hard, and I'll actually do it right now so you can see what happens. We're going to go full afterburner with shift. So we're full burn. My, my gear's down because we just landed. Let's go full burn. Let's go ahead and get lined up for our course. You hit B. B will bring up your targeter for your jump. You're going to want to get lined up to your UI element, which is Daymar, where we're going. As you line up, once you've hit B, it'll start charging up your quantum system. Hold down B when it's ready. It'll lock on. Initiated. And you'll jump. And then watch the distance drop down. You can even go into third person in this mode and hold down Z to look around. It's really pretty as you cross over. And it's a super short flight here, but if we try to go anywhere else, it would've taken forever. Once you arrive, if you wanna go check something out once you've arrived, hit F2. Hit F2, uh, zoom in on where you're at. We're over at Daymar, we can actually just target there. Come on, show me the planet. There we go. If it doesn't show anything, just zoom out slowly. Uh, why don't we go over to the Corvax? We'll go over to the shipping hub. Just take a flight over there. 
set a course to it. If you want to go down to the planet's surface, make sure uh, you target it. Go back into F2, target it, and then quantum to it, and you'll actually sling around over to it, make you get there a little bit quicker. Charging, 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 and jump. Now, I'm actually starting to black out here. Initiated. Let's even out, just in case we get shot up. And kill our cruise control. Whoa. Weapon controls. Group one, left click, right click, group two. Cruise on over to the station here while we start getting the blood back into all the places it's supposed to be in. Turn off the UI there. Now, when you're messing around with your weapons and you're finding things to shoot at, which we don't have anything to fire at here, you can hit T and change, or excuse me, R. You can hit R and change how your weapons work. So we've got gimbal-mounted weapons. Uh, actually, no, I've got only forward-firing weapons, don't I? None of mine are gimbal. Yeah, none of mine are actually gimbal. Um, but you can have auto-locking system. You can have, oh, let's see, this station didn't make it. Let's see better days. Thrusting over a bit. So we could go in there, we could explore, we could take on a mission to go explore that. Corvex. We can set a course for the station if we want to. Speaking of jobs and missions, uh, make sure, make sure you actually read, going to contact manager, read what you need um, to take for the mission, ship-wise. If you're gonna do a delivery, it requires a cargo hold, take a ship with a cargo hold. You're not gonna be able to throw cargo, uh, hold like a box in your lap. Uh, you actually have to take, like, here's a cart lost cargo mission. You can't actually, if you don't have a place to put stuff, you're not going to be able to do these missions. Now, there is a little bit of PvP here. If you do some missions, some missions will activate, um, uh, basically, counter missions for other players to take, and you may find yourself in some PvP. Got a bounty hunter contract. Uh, there's all kinds of fun stuff to do here. And there's, like, hidden missions that you can do. There's ground combat areas you can go to taking on, like, bunkers. You can do beacons. Basically, this is a call for help. You can create a beacon, go, oh crap, I went over my head, or I've managed to accidentally eject from my ship while going faster than light. Please, somebody come save me. Um, you can, yeah, personal transport, save me, save me. Where do you want to go? Um, I want to go to, you know, wherever. Uh, my age is Gladius. I can actually make my Gladius as an option. That's cool. I haven't done that before. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. There's a lot of stuff that even I need to mess around with here. Um, hopefully, that works better. I've had the worst luck with missions uh, in my history of Star Citizen. But there's tons of missions to do and a little bit more. So I hope this guide has helped you out, gotten you started. Um, there's a lot to learn here, especially when it comes to combat that you're going to want to get into. Um, using your, your D-stab, using your gimbaled weapons, stuff like that, where you're going to have to figure out what you like and what kind of controls you're using. But this is enough to get you in space, to get you pew-pewing, playing with the community. It's always better, I will say this with Star Citizen, if you're playing with a like-minded group that's there to have a good time. Uh, so once again, I'm going to plug the Armco community. Uh, I'm also going to plug some other videos like Morph's series. He's got some great stuff on the development of the game that he's been doing. Highly recommend it. That's my quick and dirty guide to Star Citizen. Hope I see you all in the verse. Later, everybody. Have a great day.